and we're back to cover some of the best musical talent in anime. Last time we covered the newcomer Masaru Yukiyama, the underutilized Hiroyuki Sawano, the gymnast Yuki Hayashi, whose My Hero Academia track is playing right now, and the apprentice Tatsuya Kato. However, part 2 is strictly about anime composers who have started their career in video games, creating beautiful interactive worlds and their work to condense those talents into something very specific. Anime composition isn't just about making cool atmospheric music, but rather delivering a scene in a very specific way. And these are the people that decided to take up the task. Walking the path of a true warrior, when Fukasawa was a child, his grandmother gave him two choices. One, he learns to play the piano, or two, they get rid of it completely. Thankfully, he chose the first option, and later on, once his short-lived band broke up, he had another decision to make. Go into music composition, or set up a new band. Once again taking the first choice, he became friends with fellow composer Taro Iwashiro, working together on several projects until they both came to Capcom with Onimusha 2, leading to Fukasawa's first breakout solo work on Chaos Legion. So after this it became very clear that Capcom liked him, so much so that six years later he was selected to do the soundtrack to Street Fighter 4. Fukasawa was under a huge amount of pressure for the new entry to the Street Fighter series. Arranging classics and composing his own brand new stage and character tracks, it was the work that put Fukasawa into the public eye. Going on to do Marvel vs Capcom 3, Monster Hunter Frontier and Street Fighter 5, in the meantime, he went off to do anime projects, with his first being Bakumatsu Kinkan Setsu Era ha this show, he got his chance to team up with Iwashira once again in 2011 for Full Metal Alchemist, The Sacred Star of Milos, and eventually produced his own soundtracks once again with the exciting Vivid Red Operation soundtrack, the eerie Akinahana soundtrack, and perhaps most notably, Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works. Calling back to his work on Chaos Legion, this Unlimited Blade Works soundtrack is one fitting of the fantasy epic it is, launching into these huge orchestral moments but never letting them be reduced into just noise as scenes of action and great power come to mind. It's one of Fukusawa's newest trademark works. Seriously, he's even put it above Street Fighter V on his Twitter profile. And whilst Fukusawa has nothing announced for the future, he's not even close to being done impressing us yet. Learning the electric organ as a child, much of Keiichi Okabe's inspiration came from much of the foreign pop and movie music that was involved in his lessons. Later graduating college, he was hired by Namco, which eventually became Bandai Namco. Starting off his career with collaborations on stuff like Tekken 3 and Tekken Tag Tournament, he raised to new heights when he formed Monica in 2004. A group of like-minded composers, many of which were from Bandai Namco, brought together to create some incredible incredibly iconic soundtracks across the industry. Starting off with smaller works doing music production for Taiko Drum Master and stuff like that, their big breakout hit was in 2010 with Yoko Taro's Nier. With Akabe as lead composer, the Monica Group created one of the most beloved game soundtracks of all time, hitting the sales chart something very rare for background collections. A genuinely beautiful OST, it was a step forward for the unit, giving them the opportunity to work on a lot of anime projects. And when I say a lot, I absolutely mean it. Monica has 132 anime credits to their name. From Bake Monogatari to Star Driver to the disappearance of Harry Suzumiya, that's just scratching the surface of what Monica has done. <laughs> Their 
really is no stopping Monica. As one of the most influential units within anime, their ability to assign a member as lead composer on a project and have that lead be supported with a whole team of other talents is unparalleled in the business. Their most recent work is on this season's Scorching Ping Pong Girls and we can also look forward to seeing their work on the upcoming Near Automata. Masaru Shina, or Gosh Shina as he's credited, is one of Bandai Namco's most valuable composers and has stuck with the company for years. As the best Tales composer, no offense to Sakuraba, Shina started out as a graduate with nowhere to go. At a time when jobs were tight, Shina applied and was rejected from 46 companies, many of which had nothing to do with music. One of them was an ice cream shop. Because Sheena was dirt poor, he'd had to cancel on a trip with his friends and he was getting holes in his shoes from having to go from company to company in search of whatever job they might have. When he reached Namco, he thought he'd screwed the interview up. See, he wasn't even much of a gamer and he had to try and pretend that he was into them for the interview, stating that Soul Edge was his favourite game, hoping desperately that they wouldn't ask him any questions about it since he'd never actually played it. Giving up completely after the interview, Sheena cried on the sidewalk as an old lady handed him a handkerchief. But then he gets a call a few days later and his life changes for the better. Gorshina was the underdog that I can't help but root for. After he got the job, he caught up on a load of games, some of his favourites now being the Gundam Warriors series, and he put his all into his job. Before Namco, Shina wasn't much of a dedicated musician, and he worked hard to improve, eventually being given the task of doing music for Tales of Legendia, one of Bandai Namco's flagship titles. With a musical style entirely unique for the previous composer's works, the staff loved Sheena's personality and work so much that he even got his own character in the game. And in 2012, when he first started doing anime works, starting with Gyo Tokyo Fish Attack, and perhaps more notably, Kyosa Giga, he showed how far he could really go. The Kyosa Giga soundtrack is absolutely magical, with similar beats to his work on Tales of Legendia at times. It's this soundtrack that really shows how unique Sheena's music can be, often going for odd combinations that really stretch the cliches for fantasy music into something wonderful. Gorshina is one of my favourite composers from any medium, just because of his ability to raise your spirits. This year he worked on Dimension W alongside Yoshiaki Fujisawa, and whilst Fujisawa is a very good composer, Sheena just couldn't help standing out. If you've ever loved the piano arrangements from Final Fantasy 7 to 11, then you may have Shiro Hamaguchi to thank. Admittedly, he actually started his career on arrangements for an anime called Violinist of Hamelne, but he really became known for Final Fantasy. Many of his renditions have been played at Final Fantasy symphonies, particularly his orchestral arrangements of the Final Fantasy 7 theme and One Winged Angel. He's kind of amazing, impressing Final Fantasy composer Nobuo Uematsu, who personally selected him to work on Final Fantasy 7. But when Hamaguchi wasn't required to arrange music for Final Fantasy, he found his calling elsewhere in a little known show called One Piece. <laughs> From Final Fantasy to One Piece, Hamaguchi has a high profile career, working with G Gundam composer Kohei Tanaka to create the soundtrack to one of the most popular anime series of all time, returning for several of the films. And as I'm sure One Piece fans would agree, it's quite good. And whilst working on these fanfare-esque One Piece tracks, he got his chance to return to his piano roots during his work with many brand new shows.
Starting with Hanasaka Iraha, Hamaguchi relives the sounds that we loved from his Final Fantasy work, but this time each track is of his own design and is based on years of composition experience. Unsurprisingly, he was brought back for various projects, including Shirobako, Girls and Panzer, and Tari Tari. He's a genuinely wonderful composer, and you have no idea how much I give to see him on Final Fantasy XV. Thanks for watching The Canopy Effect. You can click back and go watch part one, covering some of anime's best recent stars, or the third part will be out soon, covering four composers who have earned their bread through anime film scores. But for now, here's a picture of Goshina feeding a co-worker. You're welcome.